Hey YouTube, um, I'm going to be showing you how to make your own etchant. Um, I'm sure you've heard of hair chloride and um, all that stuff. But you can actually make your own that isn't quite as harmful. And um, Unlike fair chloride, it, once you um, add so much copper to it, you have to replace it. This etchant you can use permanently. Um, you just mix it up and add air to it. Works great. Um, and everything you can get from your local Home Depot. Um, uh, and your Walmart or where whatever you need or want to go to. Um, the materials you're going to need for this is um, a plastic container with a lid. I'm using an old Tupperware bowl. Um, just something that you can close up and keep it away. Make sure it's plastic, can't be metal. Um, you need muriatic acid. You can get a whole gallon of it for about eight bucks. Next, you're gonna need a bottle of hydrogen peroxide. Um, doesn't matter. Um, you need a measuring container. Just something that, if you fill this one up, then this, you know you can make anything your measuring container as long as you do the same thing on each one. Um, gloves are a must. Um, you don't want to get this stuff on you. I mean, you can wash it off with water. Um, but try not to get it on you. Um, safety glasses also, um, or face shield. Um, and if you wanted some kind of mask, because um, mixing acidic and base materials together in your basic chemistry class, you'll it'll create an endothermic reaction. And depending on which way you mix it, it can um, cause a lot of release of a lot of gas that can be fatal. Um, you don't have to worry about that, just keep that in the back of your mind whenever you're mixing stuff together. And try not to breathe it. Um, this isn't going to kill you, no. Um, I haven't seen any of the YouTube videos based on this, so I'm going to go ahead and make it. Um, I've seen some DIY places and that I've, I've read about, and that's how I figured out how to make it, and I've been using it ever since. Um, I recently just emptied my big container of it, and... I want to make a new batch. Um, you don't have to, because once it gets older, it turns green, and you can keep using it. But as long as you aerate it um, by swirling it or um, mixing it up, try not to shake it violently or vigorously, because you'll could possibly pop the top off and cause a mess. All right. Let me well. Let me go ahead and explain what we're going to do before we do it. Okay. We're going to take two thirds. You got your acid. Oh, we're just going to put acid. And take, not two thirds, I'm sorry. One part, one part acid and two parts hydrogen peroxide. So, you're going to put one cup of acid to two cups of hydrogen peroxide. Um, or that could be, if you're using a cup like this, it could be acid, and then two of these for that, depending on the batch you're trying to make. I'm just going to use this. And that's pretty much it. And let me move this out of the way. And take our container, like so, and put on our gloves. This stuff isn't going to eat a hole in your skin unless you leave your hand in the thing for hours. But it doesn't feel good on your hands. It does not at all. And I'm going to... You're going to mix your acid first so you don't create that endothermic reaction that we talked about earlier. And I'm um, just going to pour one cup of it. And try to keep your face back. You don't want to get this stuff in your eyes while you're wearing goggles, right? And pour that in there. Slowly. We don't call a mess. And it's going to stink horribly. Because this stuff stinks. It's got a weird odor, I guess. It smells like... Well, I ain't going to tell you what it smells like. It just doesn't smell good. 
And we're going to take our hydrogen peroxide. And pour it in there. Can you see the gas coming off? It's hard to see, but there's a gas coming off of it. I'm going to see if it'll come off as I pour it in here. Do you see the gas vapors coming up? You're going to try not to breathe those. <laughs> and then you're going to take one more part. And you're going to pour that in there. And try not to slop it everywhere. Once that's done, you put the caps back on everything. You should put the cap back on your muriatic acid after you um, poured it in the container. And now, after it's set there for a minute, everything should be good. You don't have to worry about dying. Just still, you shouldn't be breathing it. Um, anything that produces a um, endothermic reaction, well, anything produces endothermic reactions, like um, vinegar and baking soda. When you put the baking soda in first and then pour the vinegar on it, it releases all that gas, and that's what causes your bottle to go up in the air or explode. Same to go with the Mentos and the uh, um, Coke, and how they put the Mentos into the Coke, and the Coke's a base, and the Mentos are a, um, actually I don't know if they're an acid or not, but they just release a lot of air when the water hits it. I'm not a chemist, I ain't going to try to act like I am, but there's a principle behind it somewhere. <laughs> it's because any state of matter or whatever, whenever it changes form, takes a lot of energy, so I don't know, shit, I ain't going to try. <laughs> Alright, um, well, I don't know why I'm taking my gloves off. I am going to demonstrate something, right? So, let's go ahead. I got actually a little board I wanted to edge that I, um, well, let me take this right here, just a piece of copper, right? Well, let me show you first. See the piece of copper? Well, watch what happens when I sit here and rub it around in there for a few seconds. See how it's slightly starting to change? This to fully work it would take about two to three minutes and currently I'm not the greatest at this whole uh, YouTube thing and you'll see my water start to turn green not my water, my solution I guess you'll see it start turning green er, as more copper gets in it and you want to try to keep it moving um, this brushes more of the chemical over it with more oxygen and you see how it's starting to eat away all the corrosion and down at the bottom is starting to take off some of the copper and if you just let it set in there it'll keep eating it off and eating it off there's no more buying that um, ferric chloride and see how it's changed colors just since we made it got a light tint to a green um, this stuff is dangerous um, I wouldn't recommend drinking it um, it isn't going to kill you um, well it will kill you but <laughs> it isn't going to kill you in the form it's in without you drinking it um, preferably when you get something make sure it has some kind of release valve just so if any pressure does build up you don't have a explosion and uh, your solutions all over everything and big old mess um, preferably a pop top or something so it could pop out and you may want to leave it open a little bit um, or store it in a container that's flexible or a locked top um, but I like to have something that you can release the pressure before being exposed to it and this I can pop before I open the container so that there's no pressure buildup.
Alright, I hope that helps somebody. And, um, you can post comments if I said anything wrong or anything else and correct my chemistry, which I claimed I'm not a chemist.